I'm Daniela Perdomo. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Gotenna. And I'm here to talk a little bit about how we might reimagine our city's communication infrastructure. So I'll start with a question. Please raise your hand for me if some point recently in some city in the world, you have been trying to text somebody, potentially even someone who's nearby. You could have one, two, or even five bars of service, but you couldn't get a message through. Raise your hand if that's happened to you. <laughs> right. So um, this happens to a lot of us, and it's going to happen more and more. You, maybe you're already noticing it. And the reason for this is that we're reaching a saturation point with our network infrastructure. We have a lot of coverage, but we don't have a tremendous amount of capacity. That is not unlike all other <laughs> city infrastructure, like transit and, and whatnot. But I'll explain to you a little bit why that is in, in terms of communication. So let's say that you wanted to text somebody from your phone here who just stepped outside to grab a coffee. We all know intellectually that the, more, the most efficient thing, the, uh, the most efficient thing is to draw a straight line between two points, right? That's the shortest distance. However, when you send a text message to someone in any city, whether they're a few yards away from you or a few blocks away from you, something quite different happens. Your text leaves your phone, bounces to a cell tower, probably goes through some fiber optic cable backhaul, hits another, a repeater, probably bounces to another tower before it gets to the other person on the other side. So what that text message is doing is it's actually winding a really circuitous path on its way to essentially the same place it started. So what we have is our cities covered in infrastructure, cables, repeaters, wires, whatnot, but we don't have really reliable communication. At best, that's annoying, it's inconvenient, but in other situations, it's dangerous. So I was living here in New York five years ago during Hurricane Sandy. 25% of all people in the Penn State area affected by the storm lost total connectivity. Some people lost it for days, other communities lost it for weeks. And that, for me, <laughs> begged the question, what are we doing wrong? Why is it that our communication infrastructure tends to fail us when we need it most? And then that brought up another question for me, uh, which became Gotenna, which is why can't we communicate phone to phone? Why can't we create that efficient link with the phones that we have in our pockets at all times? And it occurred to me, these are supercomputing devices that we have with us all the time, and they actually only really enable communication when they can plug into something. They can't create it. So, um, so the other thing that occurred to me was why can't we turn density that we have in urban areas into network capacity? Why do they have to be at odds? So what if you could communicate not just phone to phone directly, but potentially phone to phone to phone to phone? If you could automatically and privately, intelligently, route messages through all the phones in the cities and buildings in this in outside, you could create a network that was completely parallel to centralized connectivity that would be available all the time, in part because of its dr distributed nature, and you could cover an entire city with communication. So this is a mesh network. Mesh networking technology has been relegated for, to, well, the most uh, highly trained special operators uh, within the military. Devices that can create a mesh network tend to cost anywhere from $30,000 to $200,000. And of course, you have to be highly trained to use them. So that's all different now. Uh, our company has developed a device called Gotenna Mesh. Uh, it's this little thing here that just pairs with a regular smartphone and allows you to create your own connectivity. And not only does it allow you to create your own connectivity with your phone, it also allows you to create the first completely off-grid, long-range, completely mobile uh, mesh network. And it's only, you know, it's under 100 bucks. So, you know, what does that mean for cities? We are starting to come a little full circle around, you know, the founding moment during Sandy. We partnered with the city of New York to deliver over 20,000 Gotenna mesh units to people and businesses located in the low-lying areas of the city. These are areas that were impacted by Sandy and are vulnerable to climate change from here on out. What these people with these devices will be able to do is create their own connectivity, not just during a disaster, but also day to day in all those situations where you can't get a message through, which is, I think, a really powerful idea. But mesh networks aren't just about New York City. I really think that mesh networking technology has, uh, has, so, much has so many applications for all kinds of cities for the following reasons. For one, it leverages mobile infrastructure that's already there. It's all the phones in everyone's pockets. 
And because there's no central point of failure, we also are able to enable uh, Q, um, critical communications between groups that haven't been able to speak before. So for instance, even if something like Sandy happened again and all systems were down, we'd be able to connect public agencies to each other, and moreover, we'd be able to uh, connect uh, emergency services to civilians. And in fact, you know, what I observed during Hurricane Sandy is that often what people <laughs> wished they had had during Sandy was the ability to just communicate with the neighbor down the street because they're there. <laughs> Whereas you know, Red Cross or FEMA might not be there, and timeliness is, is just as important. And I think that's pretty powerful. The other thing, too, is that because mesh networks, by definition, get stronger the more nodes join them. Uh, that's a lot like cities, right? Uh, and because there's no central point of failure, uh, you can really, uh, you, you add a node, you remove a node, there's always a node there to take the one that, that left. And so what that means is you can create complete scale, resiliency, and access in cities. Again, leveraging the density, which in centralized networks is actually a bad thing, and turning it into an advantage. With time, I believe that absolutely everything can become a node in the mesh network. So you might imagine um, flying drones and flying uh, balloons over cities operating as towers. You can also imagine cars and buses or <laughs> whatever you know, will be our modes of ve vehicular transit in the future acting as mobile base stations. And I also believe that in, in the longer term, even the threads in your own clothes can be antennas in this way. And so if we can create our own connectivity, what we're really talking about is creating a new urban communication infrastructure that's as flexible, adaptable, and resilient as the people who live in cities. Thank you.